Hey there and welcome to another video in my series all about uh, Microsoft Exam PL600. This is the Solution Architect Exam uh, for those who are wanting to uh, move into that role or potentially looking to validate their skills at that level uh, when it comes to the Power Platform. Uh, so my name is Joe, I'm the CRM chap and today we're going to be taking a look at specifically Power Automate flows just to give you an overview of the, of the effectively what are the three central pillars of Power Automate and the things you'll need to have a good appreciation of uh, when you're tackling the exam for the first time. So we're going to look first of all at our first type of Power Automate um, automation tool which is um, commonly referred to as Cloud Flows and this will be really for scenarios where we're wanting to link together different sort of systems where maybe we are systems that we're working with have got well documented and published APIs or connectors available to us or if we're just looking to implement some sort of personal uh, automation, some productivity sort of hacks and tweaks and things like that um, for our own personal use, then Power Automate Cloudflows will be a good tool that we can use. Um, so to get started with these, um, we would work within the Maker Portal, first of all. Then if we click on Flows on the left-hand side of the screen, we can see we should have an option here to see all the different Cloudflows. And in this case, I've got an existing flow which I made earlier. Uh, approve new contact. Um, so let's just dive into this and just see what it's doing and then just give it a test to confirm um, how it all sort of works. When it comes to our cloud flows, we need to remember a few sort of core concepts. The first of all is that all of our cloud flows must have a trigger action. Uh, in this case, our trigger action is whenever a new contact row is added into our Dataverse environment, this will be what um, uh, effectively kicks off the logic in the flow itself. Our cloud flows can only have a single trigger at any particular point. From there, our Cloudflow can then have one or several different sort of action steps that define the logic that we want to execute. So in this case, I want to implement an approval process um, that uh, will initiate whenever a new contact is added to the system. So I first of all just uh, initialize some action steps down here that's going to get me the details for the contact row that I want to reference. I'm going to dynamically build out the URL that's going to take me into Dataverse to actually view the contact row. Notice what I can do as part of this is that I can reference sort of dynamic properties. I can also do things such as using uh, what's known as the workflow definition language or WDL uh, formula language to basically write little functions like this. So in this case, I'm just getting the, uh, the host name of the URL of the Dataverse environment. So I can then just sort of parameterize that itself. And then finally, when all that's done, I can then kick off a particular sort of approval flow. Um, I can, in this case, I'm just going to assign it to my, to myself. Uh, for testing purposes and based on the actions that then occur on here I can then evaluate the outcome of that and if it's a case that maybe we've rejected the particular contact from being created in the system then we can actually go in and just delete that itself permanently. Um, so this is a fairly typical sort of cloud flow that we can build out using Power Automate. What's really nice about this development experience is that we can actually go in and, and quickly sort of test this any given point. I can just hit the button at the top up here, set the manual trigger action at the top like so and then at this point, then it's now going to wait for the action to be initiated so that it can then go off and execute what it needs to do. So in this case, what I can do is I can navigate into my um, into my dynamics um, uh, into my model driven app for my sales hub app, uh, which is using Dynamics 365. In this case, I can just go in and create a brand new contact record to test this out. So I'll just call this maybe, for example, uh, Joe uh, Griffin as an example. I'll just do Joe at domain.com and just put in just a fake uh, telephone number like so hit the save button and now the cloud flow should be kicking off in the background just give it a few seconds we should see the screen here come to life okay so you can see it's now uh, detected that the new contact row has been added into the system and now it's going to start and initiate the approval um, so because the approval has been assigned to me, I can now actually go into the, the Power Automate portal and view and take the appropriate action against this. Uh, so I can just click on the uh, on the icon at the top to open up my list of Microsoft 365 apps. Click on Power Automate, it's going to open me up into the portal. From here, if I click on Action Items, then go to Approvals, I should see that I've now got a new approval option on here that I can now review. So what it's been able to do is been able to bring in all of the details that we inputted in there from the contact row. I can see the link is also working uh, as well. I can just click on that and it'll take me straight into the newly created account row. And then just to test this flow is working how I want it to, I can maybe just reject this particular approval, confirm that like so. I should then be able to go back and see the, the flow finish executing as soon as the approval has been rejected. 
and then we can see that the contact row has now been deleted. If I now try and refresh this in my Dynamics 365 app, I should get an error to indicate that the record hasn't been found. So using Cloudflow, we can very quickly build out these very sort of simple or perhaps more complex um, uh, automations, uh, and we've got a really powerful sort of approval engine that we can leverage underneath the hood as part of this. Um, so definitely consider using Cloudflows for situations where you've got the, um, the ability to connect into the systems where you need to maybe do a number of different sort of action steps that maybe need to be parameterized uh, and you don't and you also need to potentially look to integrate with a wide variety of different systems. These will all be really good candidates for our Cloudflows as we just seen. So the next type of power automate uh, automation tool that we've got at our disposal is something known as business process flows. And these are quite different from our cloud flows. They're more really for scenarios where we want to be able to sort of capture and align certain sort of key processes in our organization. And crucially as part of that, enforce that certain sort of steps and certain data points are provided each time we sort of um, uh, start the particular sort of business process flow. Um, so there's two ways we can work with our business process flows. The first is that we can work with them in an immersive fashion by going into the Power Automate portal at the top. We can see we then got an option here for business process flows. And we can see a list of some of the out-of-the-box Dynamics 365 business process flows that are included um, uh, automatically when we deploy these applications out. I can initiate any one of these particular sort of processes by clicking on the play icon. It's going to launch me in an immersive sort of view. So what we're effectively seeing underneath here is a is a form that's been built out in Dataverse with all the various different attributes. And we can see at the top up here, we've got a, a process uh, process bar that we can expand out that then indicates all the different steps that we can sort of select this particular, um, you know, to basically get this uh, particular lead sort of uh, qualified and then move on to the next step. So each of these, I can provide different values in there. We can see we get tick icons as and when they're sort of uh, provided. And we can just continue just to go out and just provide these various different steps. So let me just call this my test lead. I call this maybe Joe Griffin again. Uh, save this. And then from there, we can see we can then continue onwards with our business process flow. We can maybe move on to the next stage when we're ready, uh, qualify the lead. Uh, and all of this can then be sort of worked with in a very sort of focused view. So don't necessarily need to have a fully built out model driven app if we've just got a very sort of basic process that we need to people just to go on and just complete, submit some data, and then from there uh, trigger some additional automation, maybe using a cloud flow, then, the business, then an immersive business process flow might be the best candidate for us to consider. The other way in which we typically consume our business process flows would be via a model driven app. So if I was to now move into my, um, into my Dynamics 365 application from earlier, if I just go into the leads um, uh, button down here and just go on and create a new lead, uh, what I should be able to see is that we've got a um, the business process flow, the same business process flow that we saw a second ago, should automatically sort of appear when we create the new record. So there it is at the top, like so. Um, so for any situation where we need to input data, for any situation where we need to ensure that certain steps are followed at each particular time, we can uh, business process flow will be the best candidate for us to consider. Uh, if we were to go in and maybe uh, inspect and edit this a bit further, we can look at some of the other more advanced capabilities that our business process flows will support. So for example, what I can look to do is maybe add on a condition and uh, have additional sort of branching uh, logic implemented as part of my uh, particular sort of process. So maybe here, if certain conditions are met on the lead, then maybe I want to just shortcut the process, move uh, my particular sort of uh, process forward automatically. Uh, I can also look to add in uh, automations that trigger as, as and when we exit or enter a particular sort of stage, we can add on additional stages to model out our process just by dragging them onto the canvas flow like so. Um, various different things that we can do as part of our business process flow to sort of maybe just enhance it further and just get it working how we want it to. So again, any situation where we need to have data validation, provide guided steps to user, uh, that's always gonna be a business process flow. And hopefully through this demo, you now understand what they are in a bit more detail. And finally, the third and final type of uh, power automate automation we can build out is something known as uh, robotic process automation or RPA flows, most commonly referred to though as desktop flows. Um, and as the name implies, what this will allow us to do is uh, be able to run and execute flows uh, from a desktop environment, be able to record out the various different sort of steps that we want our automation to uh, to do 
Uh, and then from there, we can then look to execute that either in sort of attended or unattended mode. Okay, so why might this be a particular a particular sort of, um, why might there be a need or requirement to do this in the first place is what you might be asking. Well, if you consider maybe like, for example, maybe we've got an application like this, the Contoso invoicing application. So this is an app which um, we've got access to, uh, but we've not got the ability of being able to, for example, maybe go into the backend database. Maybe it's a proprietary application. Maybe it's a legacy application of some shape or format. It just doesn't have the the ability for us to go in and access it using something like a Cloudflow, for example. So what we can do instead is potentially look to uh, access and work with this application as well. And we'll also look to do things which may be automating certain steps. So instead of having our staff go in and input invoice details each time, uh, we can just let this sort of desktop flow do this automatically. What we can also look to do as well is actually parameterize certain details of this as well, um, so that each time when we're running the desktop flow, um, it, it, it behaves differently based on how we're calling it. Um, so in order to work and basically just test out a, a desktop flow, we can just uh, edit it or go into the edit mode. Um, if I just close that down right there for a second, and then just go in after a second, and it should let me edit it, open it up in a new window. So in this view here, we have the designer for our desktop flow. And the good thing about this is that we can actually uh, record out the various different steps that we want to actually execute as part of this. Um, so uh, alternatively, we can look to drag in a variety of different action steps that we can see on the left hand side. Um, so whether we're working with sort of um, on uh, sort of desktop applications, whether we wanted to do things on a web browser, we can potentially look to record or add in those steps sort of manually. In the case of this particular sort of uh, desktop flow over here, uh, all it's going to do is going to run uh, and execute um, the uh, legacy application that we saw a few moments ago. And it's going to go in and automatically populate in a particular um, invoice on there. And we can see on the right hand side, we've got a couple of input and output uh, variables that we're referencing on there. We can maybe go and just modify any one of these potentially. So maybe for the amount, we want to set this maybe to 900 instead, update that like so. Uh, and then when we're ready to sort of test this out, we can just hit the save button at the top. And then um, one of the ways in which we can execute this desktop flow is from within the designer itself. So we'll just do a quick run and test of this, and we'll just see exactly what happens when the uh, when the desktop flow runs and executes. So hit the run button at the top up here. So you'll have to trust me here where I'm saying that I'm not touching the keyboard, I'm not touching the uh, the machine at any point here during this demonstration. This is all stuff that's been executed and run by the desktop flow. So it's able to go in there, it's able to, based on a previous recording, uh, enter in all the various details for our particular invoice, um, including the account, the contact, and we can see there's the updated value there for our $900. Then when that's all done and dusted, it then saves the record. And as a final step, it's going to then grab the newly generated invoice ID, set that as an output variable. And what we could then do is then maybe reference that as part of, for example, a Cloudflow. Um, so this is one of the ways which you can run our desktop flows. Uh, other scenarios include being able to run them in attended mode. This is where we typically would go into the um, Power Automate um, portal. From there, we can then execute and then run our, our desktop flows from within the browser. It will then take control of the machine uh, that we've set up and link to Power Automate and then run our automation like so. Or for scenarios where we don't necessarily want to have that dependency on an individual or machine, then we can also run our desktop flows in unattended mode as well. And this is where we would potentially provision some cloud compute power uh, within Power Automate that would then run and execute these automations for us automatically. Um, so RPA flows are really for those sort of last mile, those very sort of difficult and challenging automations that we can't really easily achieve via a cloud flow uh, that where we've not got the ability of being able to go in and sort of uh, have that back end access to our service or we've maybe got lots of different sort of manual steps that need to be completed or it may even be that automation just needs somebody just to keep an eye on it as it's running uh, all of these will be really good candidates for an RPA flow compared to the other types of flows that we've seen so far. Uh, so that wraps it up then for our RPA flows then and also our review of all the different um, uh, flow types within Power Automate. Um, so I hope this video has been useful in just explaining the core differences between them. From a solution architect's point of view, we need to have a good grasp of you know the potential uses cases for each different sort of flow type and be uh, expected to sort of uh, describe and elaborate upon that um, both in our day-to-day -day work and as part of potentially for the exam as well. So uh, with this video, hopefully you now feel a bit more confident to sort of approach that. 
Um, please check out the other videos in the series so far. We've been covering off a, a variety of different topics um, relating to the exam itself. Um, please give the video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you.